The Sociable Brain. In this book, I aim to lift the curtain on an emerging science, one that almost daily reveals startling insights into our interpersonal world. The most fundamental discovery of this new discipline, we are wired to connect. Neuroscience has discovered that our brain's very design makes it sociable, inexorably drawn into an intimate brain-to-brain link-up whenever we engage with another person. That neural bridge lets us affect the brain, and so the body, of everyone we interact with, just as they do us. Even our most routine encounters act as regulators in the brain, priming our emotions, some desirable, others not. The more strongly connected we are with someone emotionally, the greater the mutual force. Our most potent exchanges occur with those people with whom we spend the greatest amount of time day in and day out, year after year, particularly those we care about the most. During these neural link-ups, our brains engage in an emotional tango, a dance of feelings. Our social interactions operate as modulators, something like interpersonal thermostats that continually reset key aspects of our brain function as they orchestrate our emotions. The resulting feelings have far-reaching consequences that ripple throughout our body, sending out cascades of hormones that regulate biological systems from our heart to our immune cells. Perhaps most astonishing, science now tracks connections between the most stressful relationships and the operation of specific genes that regulate the immune system. To a surprising extent, then, our relationships mold not just our experience, but our biology. The brain-to-brain link allows our strongest relationships to shape us on matters as benign as whether we laugh at the same jokes or as profound as which genes are or are not activated in T-cells, the immune system's foot soldiers in the constant battle against invading bacteria and viruses. That link is a double-edged sword. Nourishing relationships have a beneficial impact on our health, while toxic ones can act like slow poison in our bodies. Virtually all the major scientific discoveries I draw on in this volume have emerged since emotional intelligence appeared in 1995, and they continue to surface at a quickening pace. When I wrote Emotional Intelligence, my focus was on a crucial set of human capacities within us as individuals, our ability to manage our own emotions and our inner potential for positive relationships. Here, the picture enlarges beyond a one-person psychology— those capacities an individual has within, to a two-person psychology, what transpires as we connect. I intend this book to be a companion volume to emotional intelligence, exploring the same terrain of human life from a different vantage point, one that allows a wider swath of understanding of our personal world. The spotlight shifts to those ephemeral moments that emerge as we interact. These take on deep consequence as we realize how, through their sum total, we create one another. Our inquiry speaks to questions like, what makes a psychopath dangerously manipulative? Can we do a better job of helping our children grow up to be happy? What makes a marriage a nourishing base? Can relationships buffer us from disease? Can a teacher or leader enable the brains of students or workers to do their best? How can groups riven by hatred come to live together in peace? And what do these insights suggest for the kind of society we are able to build and for what really matters in each of our lives?